Hello YouTube, this is Fru. Let's have a look at a few more AutoCrafter setups, this time in a storage system. I want a seamless integration. I want my storage like this, with three rows of chests on top of each other and one by tileable, but I want to AutoCraft some of the items. When the tricky part is to detect which items to craft and to relay this information to an AutoCrafter setup. In this video, I'll show you my solution how to do this. But first, let's talk about storage philosophy. We already looked at autocrafters in farms like gold farms. These are pretty straightforward. There isn't a ton of other things you can do with gold nuggets than craft them to blocks. But in a storage, you have a ton of options. I'm a big fan of very compact storages like this. I want to have everything I need at my fingertips within 30 to 40 blocks. And here's my storage from my last survival world, which I discussed in an older video. It contains classic Impulses V-sorters, shulker box loaders for bulk items, and a multi-item sorter. And it allows me to sort about 100 items individually and about 20 slices on a multi-item sorter. And this conveniently fits into a 3x3 chunk area, so you need only one chunk loader to load it. Of course, you can extend this and use a second chunk loader if you want to have more capacity. There are other rooms for bulk storage and storage of unstackables like books, but this is the room where I get almost all of my items if I start building something. And I want the additional redstone for the crafters to be hidden somewhere out of sight. Also, I'm not sure I want to autocraft everything that's possible to autocraft, but I am sure that I want to craft up at least the items that I need the most. I typically have the most used items in one place, like rockets, food, scaffolding and chests for shulker box crafting, and yes, I craft golden carrots because trading with villagers is a pain and I have a good gold farm. So let's build a setup that crafts these items for us. Here's the original slice of my Impulse of Sweet Sorter array. Three chests on top of each other, so this is the visible part. And two double chests per item, of which one double chest is accessible. The water streams are on the ice, so we need a good strategy to auto-craft stuff in a one wide setting. The only location where we have the necessary space is below the sorter. So we'll use auto crafting only for the lowermost row. And the most difficult problem is in fact to get a decent reading if we need to craft items, so if this chest is full. We need to detect if either the lowermost chest or hopper is full, or full enough, but we can't use comparators or subtraction in a one wide setup. So here's the setup that I will use. In order to fit everything, I had to use a different configuration of the sorter, which may be unfamiliar to you. I don't know where I picked it up, it was a long time ago. And if you know who originally created it, then let me know and I'll give a shout out in the description. But the principle is exactly the same as the standard Impulses V sorter. We use a three long redstone line, so the last block is powered only if we have 46 or more items in the hopper that we read here. And we lock the hopper below if our filter contains 45 or less items. So this has the same properties as the impulse sorter, mainly that it's overflow proof, although it's more noisy because of the piston and more expensive because we need more components. And I have moved the lowermost chest down to the floor level to give me a bit more room, but this still allows me to have the top of the three rows at height 5, which is still easily accessible. Anyway, we read the hopper feeding into the lowermost chest and use the old trick of having an observer detect a redstone level going from 14 to 15. And it goes like that. Um, by the way, I use a data pack from Vanilla Tweaks to display the redstone levels, hopper orientation and more. You can download it for free and it's fantastic for redstone setups. So we use a comparator reading this hopper and it goes into this solid block here and powers the redstone dust below it. So if I take out some items, we'll get a lower reading. And now we'll power this redstone dust from the other side with signal strength 15. For example, using this observer setup, watching the rails, whenever the observer reads a signal, this redstone signal jumps to 15. And if this hopper is full, then this observer doesn't detect anything, nothing happens. But if the hopper is not full, this observer here detects a pulse relays it into this node block here, where we don't have issues with quasi-connectivity, then we can detect triggering of a node block actually on both sides, so we can go to whichever side we want. And then we can relay the signal further down 
for example like this. So if we change the state here, this observer below will give a signal. This is where we connect the autocrafter. And this setup allows us to build the autocrafters in an area that is about 12 blocks away into either coordinate centered on this block here, which is fantastic, which is plenty of space. Now all we have to do is to integrate this into our storage. And this is the final setup. And I will go to either side and I will try to build autocrafter setups one wide. So even though this is not tileable, for example, we strongly power this autocrafter. So if we had a block here, we would power it. But since we have a gap of one block between them, there's no issues. But we can also use this gap if we need the space, as we see here, as long as we are careful not to power the components in the adjacent slice. So the perhaps simple setup is scaffolding because it takes only two ingredients that we get from farms, bamboo and string. And here I just use shulker boxes with the ingredients, but you have enough room to integrate shulker box unloaders if you want to. So an observer notices the change of this piston. So let's take out some scaffolding. And this leads to a signal less than 15 here. So we get a signal from this observer. And as we showed a moment ago, this observer notices this block moving and powers the crafter. The items go into a water stream, are looped back to the storage and are sorted here. So observe that we have a very slow clock here. And this is because this one hopper here needs to replenish all of the bamboo. So we need to push in six items. And in fact, we'll power the pistons only once every 3.2 seconds or slower, enough time to get eight new in ingredients in, what we'll need for golden carrots in a moment, which is very slow, but this is a storage. And this will be loaded a lot. And I chunk load it to automatically sort my junk, even if I'm not in the vicinity. So I don't really care about speed at all. The storage will run for hours in the background. A thousand items per hour, as we have here, if we craft once every, say, 3.6 seconds, is about 15 stacks of items per hour. Of course, you could split the setup and use faster clocks for part of your crafter. Just alternate powered rails and activator rails with different clocks, but be aware that of course the redstone signal will bleed over, so this setup kind of relies on the fact that all of the observers are powered at the same time. So you would probably need a slice without auto-crafting and then you can start again with the redstone. So you could produce the items quite quickly if you wanted to. The scaffolding is replenished and the lower most hopper is once again full. In fact, we even have a bit of scaffolding in the top chest because it takes a bit of time for the scaffolding to arrive. So this one is done. Great! Next, let's look at chests, and this is even easier. We have an input of locks here, which could be just a chest or a shaker box unloader again. Then we can chain two auto crafters. So one converting the planks and the second crafting the planks to chests. So the first one here is strongly powered by the observer and also powers the second one. And we get a chest every second pulse. Done, next. And the next recipe is golden carrots. And here we have an issue. So we want to auto-craft gold blocks down to nuggets and then craft the nuggets to golden carrots. But auto-crafters behave other than different blocks. For example, if this barrel here was full with nuggets, then the auto-crafter would still spit out the ingots and they would fly all over the place and would be lost. So an auto-crafter facing into a container will craft items even if the container has no room. And I'm not sure if this may be fixed in a later version, this is a snapshot after all, but we must make sure that we run these crafters, converting blocks to ingots and ingots to nuggets, only if we really need ingots. And for that, we have this little setup here. We feed the nuggets using a hopper into our auto crafter and then have another auto crafter drop the nuggets basically into this hopper here, but we can't have the hopper below the auto crafter. Otherwise the hopper would suck out the ingots. And then we read this hopper here and we have a clock that will run only if the hopper is empty. And we will get several pulses. Typically we will convert two nuggets, but that's not, not an issue. And then we use exactly the same setup to convert the gold blocks to nuggets. And in this case, we read a barrel because that's easier, but it works exactly the same way. Okay, this is done. Next one. Now, after all this 
rockets are really easy. So all of this relies on the fact that we prefill the recipe. So if I would, for example, run out of paper, then we would end up with two gunpowder, but we couldn't craft anything. So that's not a big problem. If we had two items that would give a valid recipe, we might end up with junk items. So for those, you need to be careful that you always have enough of the ingredients. But okay, back to rockets. We feed the gunpowder directly into the autocrafter and use another crafter to produce paper from sugarcane using the same principle we just saw. So we get three paper whenever we have three sugarcane crafted up here. Okay, done. Next. Now for something more complex, let's have a look at pistons. And pistons, of course, require four different types of inputs. We need the cobble, we need planks, we need iron, we need redstone. We have cobble feeding in from one side, we have redstone feeding from other side. Now you could also craft redstone blocks to redstone dust, of course. And we have an auto crafter converting iron to iron ingots on one side. And on the back, we have an auto crafter converting wood to planks. This does use a bit more space, but again, it's not strictly necessary that they are all in a row. We could totally build this somewhere else, like here or here or wherever you want. So you could space out these contraptions a bit. And the setup works pretty much for everything that doesn't require unstackable items, because for unstackables you can't preload the recipes like so. But we do have a ton of space here. If you want, for example, to craft dispensers, then you could just take a signal here and plug in your favorite dispenser crafter, of which there are several designs out there on YouTube. From a user interface standpoint, this is all you see, and this is actually very neat and compact. And I really like the setup, and I'm pretty sure that I will build a storage like this once 121 comes out. And I don't plan to autocraft everything that could be autocrafted, but I will certainly go to my survival world, check my statistics, and see which items are crafted up the most. And for example, I crafted a ton of rockets, I crafted a ton of chests, so I will automate all of these for my storage. Well, for the items that I craft just once on a blue moon, I don't really see the necessity to add auto crafting for my storage. So thanks for watching, leave a like if you want to see more content like this, subscribe not to miss anything, and see you next time. Bye bye!